downgrading because it's better than upgrading. This video is going to touch on a few things. It's mostly going to be a bunch of links to how to's and I'm just going to bring up a really short list of what you're downgrading so that you can upgrade. How to get rid of Windows modern ribbon interface for 32 and 64 bit versions of various programs for Windows 7 otherwise known as how to make uh, the programs from Windows Vista and Windows XP, yes, Vista had a few programs that were good, run under Windows 7 and even newer operating systems because the current versions are so crippled that you're annoyed by it. Specifically, Calculator, that's a minor one, but I'm including it just because I can. Microsoft Paint, which should never have been altered to, to the god-awful thing they did later. Photo Viewer and Sound Recorder, which were deliberately dumbed down to the point that they're useless, so you'd be forced to buy more expensive programs. And Microsoft, uncharacteristically, wasn't offering something to try to be monopolistic. They just fucked it up for no good reason. Except that it kept you from being able to rip MP3s. Yeah, the whole point was to comply with some imagined lawsuit potential from the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or something. And more annoyingly, and less importantly than any of this, WordPad. When Microsoft Corporation pulls a Internet Explorer where they hook in a piece of software so deeply you can't get rid of it, even when you're supposed to be upgrading to Microsoft Word, and it still won't let go because they wrote it to be the biggest bitch that ever bitched. True story. So uh, we're going to cover this. Again, don't watch the video. Use the uh, links below in the description. <clears throat> we're going to do WordPad Vista replacement as an example. This is a really bad one. This is a pain in the ass. First step, zero step, is you have to take ownership of all the files mentioned. And then fight the operating system when it tries to take permissions away from you again. You have to disable UAC. You have to disable the file protection system, or otherwise known as the monopoly protection system. That is such a deep subject, I'm not even going to do a video on it. You're just going to have to read the links below on how to have those features. It's mentioned under taking control of your computer. WordPad from Vista can open DOC, DOC files, and DOCX files but not as well. WordPad for Windows 7 opens DOCX only properly and won't open DOC even though it should be able to. So you need to keep both copies and you definitely need to replace WordPad 7. So you have to get a copy of WordPad for Vista. It's now loadable. But Microsoft being for some reason, incredibly nasty about WordPad. Like, hooking it into everything like a tick. You're not going to get help from them. This should be a downloadable fix. If you do this, it may say you're unable to create a new document and not explain why. That's a bullshit explanation. You have to take ownership of that executable to force it. And you also have to have the MUI files. These are for language translations. So wherever you look and find wordpad.exe, look for en-us or some other language. It's the language file. So if you found it under a directory called uh, accessories, look for accessories slash en-us. That's where the MUI file goes. Now you can find a copy of WordPad old enough it doesn't require it, but you need to make sure it's in there and it has to have the same file name. And it should be wordpad.exe and wordpad.mui or whatever the file is. The old version needs to be renamed wordpad7 or whatever you want to call it. And then its MUI file needs to be named the same way. Yes, this is complicated. This is the worst one, I promise. The directories, plural, that wordpad was copied to are windows, sys, wow, 64, and Windows System 32, and another directory. Why so many backup copies? Because they are acting as placeholders for 32 and 64-bit versions, and now we get to program files, Windows NT, 
accessories directory where it's stored, along with the en-us MUI file area. That's an example of Microsoft Corporation making sure it's in a bunch of compatibility locations for 32 and 64-bit versions, as well as Windows NT accessories directory. And the write.exe file you might be looking at. Well, why don't I just use that? All it is is a stub that jumps to WordPad. All of those need to be consistently renamed WordPad 7 or some other name. Make up one. And then the other version call it from WordPad Vista needs to be WordPad AXE. And again, the, 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 the language translation names need to be there. This will automatically make it to where it stops opening WordPad 7 and it'll open WordPad Vista, which is less crippled. But again, it will open DOC, but not properly DOCX, but it tries. The older, the, the newer WordPad 7 will open DOCX, DOCX. You need both. And you need to add them to a right-click open with category for both of them. And then you have to fight the operating system not wanting you to associate DOCX with WordPad 7 and open DOC with Vista's version of WordPad. And this is before you ever install a good word processor. Now, I know I just spent a lot of time, but let's, let's bring this up. The registry is packed with I'm not kidding, 50 entries trying to prevent you from fixing this thing that gets in the way of you installing Microsoft Word, much less any other word processor. That's a lot of fucking hate fucking going on. That's a lot of hate programming going on and encumbering and sabotaging and booby trapping going on. This is a list of booby traps. And this is the bare minimum to get it to where you can use it. I gave up a long time ago telling the operating system to let go of its preferences, and I just make everything right-click open with. Okay, I promise that's the worst one. Let's move on. Microsoft Paint from Windows Vista can be grabbed from archive.org. Uh, you can get old MS Paint working in Windows 7, and there's a bunch of zip files. There's many backup copies of it. All it is is just a paint program but it has the ability to be enhanced or extended to do things like save in PNG format and a dozen other formats. That's not something I can cover in the video. We have to move on, but again, you put it in a directory structure where you find the old MS Paint and you just rename the old Paint, old Paint. You have to look under, you know, is there a language file included? That, again, if it's in the Windows System directory, you have to go to Windows System EN-US and look for the MUI file that says MS Paint. Or you take the newer, well, older, excuse me, version of, let's say, Vista Paint and just name it Vista Paint or Old Paint and just right-click Open With. Again, that last one, it's a pain in the ass. But the operating system can't make you not do it. If you make the association change, the operating system will throw a hissy fit and start deassociating. Who knows what? I gave up a long time ago trying to fight the monopolistic self-protection behavior the operating system does in the name of security to make sure that you can't have control over your computer. This isn't even passive-aggressive. This is aggressive behavior on the operating system's part. The next one after WordPad and Paint being altered is we're going to go into the weird ones like Windows Photo Viewer. It's a DLL file. There's a whole laundry list of shit. You're just going to have to look it up. Next, um, learning how to add open with, which again means the operating system can change it later, versus right-click open with, or send to. The send to hack is the only one I suggest. After a while, I gave up on open with, because it would change it, or it would obfuscate it to where I overtly told it to open it with, let's say, paint, and it would open it with some other program because programs fight over and over again with each other and with the operating system and with Microsoft Corporation for monopolistic control over your computer. Send to, open with, or default open with, all can be hacked. The one that's less trouble is if I right click and I say send to. Let's move on. Photo Viewer, depending on how old it is, can animate a GIF. That was removed for no good reason as well in Windows 7. Again, pick your poison. 
You have to take ownership of things. You have to work at it. You have to hack the operating system. You have to tell it to turn off its, quote, protections for your own good, all of them or nothing, because it'll then undo everything you're trying to do just to get the work done. People ask me, what paint program do I use? I'm using five of them because each of them has limitations seemingly insistent on putting them in, and others behave in ways that are horrible. NeoPaint's great, except if you try to zoom in and out, it overtly goes out of its way to say, oh, the zoom function's broken. Would you like to upgrade? Yeah, that's, that's demanding money and, and holding my system hostage. You can look up how to restore classic programs for the user interface for Windows 10, Windows 7, etc., including Vista and using older versions, and sometimes importing newer ones. I'm using a Windows 8 routine on my computer in some cases. Now we're going to talk about Sound Recorder. It had a 60-second limit, and it had a limit on how much RAM you could have. There's two hacks for it, one of involving altering hex code. I had to do that, because putting out a completely repaired version of it Seems like it's too much work for all the open source programmers out there that could literally do an edit of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 bytes. 10 bytes? You can't alter it? 10 bytes. You put it up on a website that's really sketchy. Anyway, the edits are down below for Sound Recorder 32 for Windows XP. Service Pack 3 patch number 1 gets rid of the time limit. Number 2... Uh, gets rid of the uh, RAM limit. Or is it the other way around? Uh, crashing because you have too much memory is corrected in patch 1. Patch 2 also corrects the time limit. There's a hack around that where you can load up a file and just make it use a file that's over one minute long and then it suddenly has no limit. But patching the program, which again was 10 damn bytes and another part was uh, 2... But no, we can't have an unpat we can't have a patch version that's hacked. There's also instructions on how you start it always with a blank wave file that's way over a minute long, just to make sure. It has to be a wave file for some reason. And again, it can be extended. If you do the hacks, it allows you to dump in other files. You can you can make it save in MP3 format. Although it's kind of a pain in the butt, it can do it. It can open MP3s, kinda. Of, like a media player. And again, you have to do the right-click send to or right-click open with and hope the operating system doesn't fight you. Running all these, you have to run them under Service Pack 2 or Service Pack 3 for XP. It doesn't matter what version they are. It forces it to start that way because most of the programs were written for Windows XP compatibility, even if they weren't put in it. So that means if you're running Windows XP, you can drag something from Vista sometimes. You just tell it Service Pack 3 because that's basically what Vista really is in some ways. Now, that also includes things like expanding it from the raw CD-ROM, how to extract things. A bunch of instructions are below, not in the description, but at the links. So what have we covered? Again, we're talking about WordPad being obscenely hard to clean up and fix for no good reason other than to be bitchy on the part of Microsoft Corporation. A photo viewer that had features taken out that you may not have even known existed that only just made the computer less useful. You won't animate a GIF? Really? A sound recorder altered for copyright reasons, so it injects noise. I had a video explaining that. You change a setting. Literally, it causes noise when you're trying to record something. A noise effect? A pseudo-random generator? And also taking away your ability to, you know, the newer version can record an hour's worth of recording. Yeah, in one format, not in any format you want. MS Paint being limited for some fucking reason and made more crashy. And again, calculator. I didn't even bring that up. It's just you drag a copy in. I mean, why would you fuck? And yes, all of these are petty, unnecessary, I don't even think a lawyer could come up with a valid reason to do most of this. And it was all done to cripple the operating system just a little bit more because people like me. i called an extreme programmer or extreme user. I'll use Notepad to edit a hex file, which I did because I can. I know how to do it. It's just you're probably going to break a program or make a virus out of it by accident. But the point is these resources are out there because of people like me trying to make a computer less fucked. And this is part of a series on me showing people how to install Windows 7 to be a good op system. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. 
Hope this was useful.